I had a question. So e, so e um is now the only survivor because C is gone too. Will he get severalty then at that point? Although he came in after the well, original. E, e would never be the sole survivor because D yeah. was of the original group. Okay. So then possession goes back to D. E would of the original group. Because remember, you've got this. E bought that interest. D survived the other A and B. So what you have is D now owns 75%. E owns 25%. And I told you they are now tenants in common. And remember, tenants in common, and you can sell. sell or give away your property like normal real estate. Okay. So in the example here, once it comes down to just these two left, D owns 75%. In his will, he could leave his children his 75%. So could him. He could put it in a will. He could give it away because it's now a tenant in common. And tenants in common can sell. Right. Okay. And tenants in common work just like, and I keep giving the finger quotes, normal real estate. I can sell my house without anybody questioning it. I can give it away. I can lease it out. That is my right disposition. And that's what that's how tenants in common are treated. Even though it's only a portion of a building, it's still treated like normal. You can sell it, lease it, give it away, put it in your will, do all of that. In a joint tenant, that option is no longer there. In a joint tenant, it must go to the other parties of the joint tenant. You can't sell it, you can't lease it, you can't give it away. Matter of fact, when I die, my kids are still hungry because my portion would go to my brother under the rules of joint tenant. Cameron? For joint tenancy and like a tenancy in common, is like four or five people like the max or can you like realistically have as many people in it as you want? Theoretically, theoretically it's defined as an unlimited number. All right. Um, my ex-wife is a tenant in common and it was willed to her by her grandfather and there are 13 owners to this commercial building in Ohio. Hmm. Her percentage is like 3.85%. <clears throat> it was a big medical building. Her grandfather was a psychiatrist, fairly successful, owned this building with these other psychiatrists and there's a pharmacy <clears throat> and they split it up based upon how much they put into the property. And it was a tenant in common. So when her grandfather named Kenny died, she inherited his 3.85. So now she can go to the board of directors meeting as an owner and she gets 3.85% of the vote while Kenny's friend, owned 15%, he had the pharmacy, he gets 15% of the vote and whatever they do because they are tenants in common. It was willed to her through her grandfather. All right, joint tenants, if they would have been joint tenants when her grandfather died, his 3.85% would have been absorbed by the other members of the joint tenants and Kim would have got nothing because in joint tenants, you can't will it, give it, sell it, lease it. It goes to the other owners by definition. And that is the key concept. Tenants in common can be disposed of normally.
joint tenants cannot. It must go to the surviving members. And when the last surviving member is the winner of the game, he now has several people. So if they were joint tenants, Kim's grandfather died, his 3.85% would have went to all of the other 12 guys. And then number 12 guy dies, his percentage would have been absorbed by the 11 guys. Then number 11 dies, his percentage would have been absorbed by the other 10 guys. And we can play this game all the way down to, at some point, there's going to be two guys and they own 50-50 and one dies and the last one owns it 100%, but because he's the last member of the joint tenant, he now has severalty and he can sell it, will it, give it away, do whatever. Because he is the last surviving member of the original joint tenants. Thumbs up. But in this case, it was a tenants in common. So her grandfather willed his ownership to my ex-wife because it's a tenant in common. Cameron? With like the tenancy and stuff like that, our um, like air and ground rights, is that all divided equally as well? Yes, because that joint tenancy would own the real property, which would be the air rights, the soil rights, mineral rights, assuming they got them when that they bought the property. All right. It would it's a interest ownership of the entire real property. She has 3.85% interest in that property. Sarah, you haven't asked the question. You're either rock solid or so far in left field. I have no idea what's going on. All right. So those are the two types of concurrent ownership. Now, there is a very special joint tenants for married people. Married people. It is called tenants by the entirety. And this is one of the actual claims on that same sex marriage because people that are legally married under the eyes of the law are protected under this tenants by the entirety where friends living together for even a hundred years are not protected indiana does not have common law marriage all right so when i die my wife automatically gets my portion of our house because we bought it as a tenant, as a married couple, which celebrate or use tenants by the entirety. My children from the first marriage cannot come and try and get my interest in the house and go, that's our will, our inheritance. We want some of that money. No, it's my wife's house. And they cannot challenge that because the state law says my wife is protected under tenants by the entirety. So in essence, she and I both own the house 100% by the entirety. When I die, she's still the owner. Okay. Whereas friends living together do not get the protection of tenants by the entirety. It is a law that is written to protect the sanctity of a marriage and protect one spouse or the other so that they don't get left high and dry. If they were two friends living together and I died, let's say my wife and I were just living together not married 
if I died, my six kids could come to my estate and go, we want our portion of that house in Nashville because it was my father and I can claim inheritance. And that lady she's living with, not too bad. Maybe she has to sell the house to give me my money. Do it. Whereas in marriage, can't do that because we're protected. We protected the spouse under tenants by the intention. Now, marriage has this thing called community property. Every state in the continental, well, in the union, is considered community property while you are married. Once you get married, everything you buy is community property. All right? It's prior to marriage that states differ. There is what they call separate property states, and there are community property states. And what they are talking about, this has to deal with property that is owned by or prior to the marriage. And they say property because it could be personal property or real property or intellectual property, doesn't matter, it's all property. Indiana is a separate property state. And here's what separate property means. In a separate property, everything that one person owns prior to the marriage So I own a car. If I get married and then get divorced, I still own the car. So anything prior to marriage is separate property. I brought the car to the marriage, we get divorced, I take the car away from the marriage. Anything that you get willed to you is your property, even if you are married. If you and your husband go out and buy a bedroom set and then get divorced, you bought it while you were married, that's community, now you're getting divorced, theoretically you are supposed to split that bedroom set and each one of you get half. If, hold on Cameron, if you're married and your grandmother wills you that really nice bedroom set and then you get divorced because we're in Indiana, the judge would say that bedroom set gets pulled out and the entire thing gets given to you because it was willed to you, it's yours. Now you divide the rest of the stuff because it's community. 